Hey, how's it going? Hi, Rod. How are you? I, it's Friday. I'm it's doing well. Friday. I'm yeah. so happy that it's Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I cannot complain. I love the weekend, and it's a long weekend, so I'm going to kick my feet up and enjoy some sun rays. How about you? I am so excited. Um, it, it, uh, I'm happy that it's a weekend. Yeah. I'm going to figure out how to... Um, had a rest this weekend. It'll be great. Um, I am tremendously excited to be making coffee with you because this is what we do all day. And I invited, with your permission, I am inviting my husband and manager, Adam, who's the one who really makes all the coffee in this okay. house. And I thought right. it would be cool if we all Nice learned. to meet you. Hey, how's it going? She basically told me I needed to step my coffee game up. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> It's it's terrible. No, I'm just kidding. I just thought that that would be so fun. Um, so where are you calling in from? Yeah, so I am actually in Sacramento, California. So it's still morning here. Uh, however, the business uh, is headquartered in Des Moines, Iowa. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that is a, a typical response when we tell people that we are located in Des Moines. Um, so my business partner and I, um, we grew up in the Midwest, and so he actually grew roots there in, in Iowa, and I ventured out west. The weather's a lot better out here. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I've i been to Iowa one time. I went to Des Moines. There was the um, – it was like an Iowa – like Iowa City fashion show or something like that, and I spoke at – or I, yeah, I, like, gave a, a speech or something at a fashion show, and I got to meet, like, a, a bunch of really cool people, and I – would have never otherwise gone to Iowa, but it was really yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, I, Pernell, my business partner, um, I'll call him by a, a lot of names today. Pernell, PJ, or P. It's all the same person. Right. Um, but he actually graduated from University of Northern Iowa, so that's why he's, uh, he's located there. Um, yeah, you know, it's a great, great state, great city. Um, it's, it's a, there's a lot of surprises there. Um, obviously, I, I travel back and forth. Um, maybe once or twice a quarter before everything was shut down. And uh, I enjoy it. It was really quiet. It's, uh, it's, it's what you would think a, a, a Midwestern city is. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Well, okay, so tell me what your favorite part of the pro process of producing your own coffee brand is. Because your background is in nonprofit work <laughs> it is, and, and academia. So this is something that is like more passion driven Absolutely. and newer because you guys just turned two, which yes. congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, my, what's my favorite part about it? It's really just having the opportunity to introduce to our friends, family, and anyone else who's familiar with our brand to quality coffee. Um, you know, I remember growing up and seeing that, you know, 10 can of coffee on my grandma's uh, counter and, drinking it and having a, having a bitter taste, so to speak. And uh, that was really my, um, my interpretation of what coffee was until I was introduced to better. Um, and so that's probably the most satisfying part is to um, uh, have people go through that discovery process with us and letting them know that there is, uh, you know, higher, more top tier levels um, of this product that we all are familiar with. And what's your coffee ritual? Like, what's your go-to? Are you drinking it right when you wake up? Are you drinking it five times a day? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I, honestly, I wasn't a coffee person prior to starting this company. I actually prefer tea um, because you, you know, it, it serves many more purposes. And you actually have my favorite there. That is the, I, I love some good green chai. Um, and so... Um, I've, the pendulum has swung, though. I drink far <laughs> much more coffee now. Um, and I have it early in the morning when I wake up. I'll have it as an afternoon pickup. <laughs> just so well, when are you there. having tea then? Are you having tea at night or still tea at night? night? Tea at <laughs> night. Yep. You know, that's how I end the day. I want some ginger tea, some chai, or some chamomile if I need to, you know, get to sleep a lot faster. Amazing. Okay, I'm so excited. So tell us about what we're making today. I have... Are these three different? Yes, okay. they're three different coffees. Okay, okay. Oh. Yes, so what we're going to make today, um, which is my preferred brew, uh, brewing method, um, French press coffee. Um, and what I'm going to use is our rise and grind. 
Um, I love our rise and grind because it's a medium roast. Some people swear by the light roast, others like dark roast. I think the medium roast has that Goldilocks approach. It's, it's perfect, it's, it's just right. Has a very inviting um, you know, flavor note um, uh, characteristics. And so that's what we're gonna use today. Amazing. So, okay, I've never, I understand roasts like there's dark, medium, and light, but is a darker roast just a stronger coffee or what does that what does roast actually mean yeah um so the the darker roast that's going to give you that um that that stronger coffee flavor whereas the lighter roast give you an opportunity to really experience the flavor notes that exist within the coffee so mm -hmm. let me nerd out here for a quick moment uh yeah. coffee is a harvested plant um, and often it takes on the characteristics from the crops that are grown within close proximity. So that's why you'll see the flavor notes as lemon, bell pepper, honey, um, you know, chocolate, graham. Um, it, it really represents what, um, you know, again, what's in what's grown in close proximity. So the light roast is going to give you um, the that that optimum tasting experience ultimately. Huh? Because if you like, if you're not a coffee nerd although i like really would love to be i would just assume that if it's light a lighter roast it's just like a thinner coffee or in my head i see like it would taste more watery if that makes sense because yeah, that's what, yeah. but I, if I, I wouldn't have thought about it as being able to actually be more attuned to what the notes are mm -hmm. i would say that's where you're going to get the most robust flavor uh it is by uh, brewing a light roast cup of coffee Amazing. Okay, so today we're doing a medium. We're doing a French press. Are we using the French press Renee gave us? Yep. Okay, so we this is this is going to be special. I don't know if Renee is watching, but um, one of Adam's the one of his team members, Renee Hill, who is amazing. She is a fashion designer. She's a Black Muslim fashion designer who's on Project Runway. Has a line, and when we were doing a team like retreat in the mountains she gifted us her french press because we loved her french press so this is super extra special because it's like somebody we love in a brand we love yeah yeah awesome. perfect perfect um so let me know when you're ready i can run through a couple of um you know tools that you need in order to brew the the best cup of coffee in my experience um and so we'll start from the beginning what yes. do you need out the gate as quality beans and you have that. <laughs> First Wait, no, we're using, we're using Rise and Grind. Yeah. Oh, this is, we have two. Amazing. So okay. from there, um, it, it's really what's, what's important is that you get the, the grind texture correct. So um, you have various grind levels, uh, ground levels. You have your medium, which is what is typically used for a traditional drip cup of coffee. Um, you have very finely ground coffee, which is ultimately used for espresso shots. But for a French press, what you need is coarse ground coffee. Uh, and by coarse, I'll show you here. I've ground some up already because I didn't want to make that loud noise. It needs to look like table salt, ultimately. So again, not as fine like a powder per se, um, but it should be a, a very similar to what table salt feels like. So get you a nice grind there and, and that will certainly help extract the flavor notes during the brewing process using the French press. Okay. So this is already ground for it? Perfect. It should be, yeah. Okay. Okay, but if we had beans, if because we have a grinder, how how long are you grinding it for French press versus espresso? That, that depends on the grinder. So there are a couple of types of grinders you can use. You can use a blade grinder, which is similar to like a, a blender, so to speak. Or you can use a burr grinder blade right there. Yep. So um, it, it, it's really, you just have to get familiar with, with, with your grinder. I, there's no set time. Ultimately, um, it's really what's necessary in order to get that coarse feeling. Um, okay. So I would, is it one press? Is it one button? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so I would, you know, just kind of press it a couple of times so that it's not continuous because that's what's going to get you that fine powder. Um, you want just to kind of chop it up, if, if you will, like, a, like a, a chopped salad or something. Along what there. do you usually do for French press? Do you do it? Like 15 like, seconds. But did you know that? 
about the... No, I just do, did whatever <laughs> the man <laughs> came <laughs> Okay, that, great. Well, that's why I'm here. I, I'm here so that you can, uh, as you said, upgrade your, your coffee <laughs> exactly. tasting experience. <laughs> Somebody asked about suggestions for grinders. Yeah, I, I was, again, the type of grinder that you should seek out is Burr, B-U-R-R, um, as opposed to blade grinder. So what, whatever brand is your preference, you know, I, I'll leave that up to you, but Burr is the type of grinder so that you can have more consistency um, in the grinding process. You don't want um, the you know, beans to be, uh, you, you want them to have ultimately um, the, the, the same size and um, you know, throughout that. So um, burr grinders is what I would suggest. Amazing, okay, what's next? So the next thing, you, you wanna make sure that you're using filtered water um, uh, and just below boiling, all right? So oft oftentimes people will brew their coffee using water fresh out the pot and, it, and it's blazing hot and that kind of burns the beans. Um, and that will ultimately lead to kind of a, a bitter tasting cup of coffee. So you want the water to be just below boiling. I would say wait about three to four minutes at max after you boil um, your water. That's a um, what's the temperature you usually want it at? Between about 200 and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we, that's what we want. Okay, yes, that, that's what you want. And boiling is 212 degrees you want it to uh, drop about 10 degrees or so okay. so i got the, the water boiling in the background um so that um we just put water in here uh -huh. and that is i don't know if you could see it because i was holding it but um so we'll wait on that to get to 205 205 205 that would be ideal okay um, how much coffee should we we be adding so that's the next thing so you can have great grounds, great coffee, you can have the right water, the right temperature, but if the water to coffee ratio is off, that's where you get kind of that watery coffee or it's too bold of a flavor. So what we recommend is anywhere between a one to 14 to 18 ratio. So I'll explain what that means ultimately. And I'm, I'm using grams as the unit of measurement ultimately. Um, so for every, um, a gram of coffee, ultimately, you should have about 16 grams of water. That's my, my preferred ratio. That gets me the, the, the best tasting cup of coffee. Um, and so um, that water to coffee ratio is key. Um, it, so you'll, you'll play around with it. Brewing coffee is really a lot about experimentation. There is no right or wrong way to do it, ultimately. Um, so anywhere between that 15 to 18 range, I think you'll find um, what works best for you. But I use personally one to 16. So get one gram of coffee to 16 grams of water. Okay. Yeah, so for people who don't measure in grams. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so oh, what I'm you'll need to do that you'll also need a, a digital scale, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that helps you stay very consistent in that brewing process. It, it's just a scientific me method if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of it. But um, I'll say two tablespoons of coffee for an eight ounce cup of coffee. If you don't have access to- For how many uh, ounces? Eight. Eight. Yep. Okay. So like one cup, no? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, <gasps> what is my math again? Yeah. <laughs> this has been so long. Okay. <laughs> And so th that part, you know, I, I learned that along the way as well, because I was just like, oh, I'll just throw some coffee in, I'll throw some water in, and there's my cup of coffee. But, um, you know, again, if you're looking for consistency, about two tablespoons for every eight ounces, I think will get you um, what you're looking for. Okay. Yeah, this is, um, wait, so I, I just want to, I want to learn from you, and then I want to compare like she's just asking. She's just ask, directing the questions towards me. No, yeah. <laughs> I just want to know, like, did, like how how have we been doing it? I want to so, know how it's going to be okay. different. So I go the beans up to eight on here, on the grinder. There's a little mark, yeah, right in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, eight, and then I use three and a half cups of water at two hundred and eight on that thing. Oh wait. After oh. grinding it to like. But so it is, it, are you doing, is it a proportionate thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually use it from the paper that was in the manual. Like I wasn't trying to. <laughs> <laughs> that works, that works. It can definitely improve. 
This is awesome. How many how many exper coffee experiments do you think you guys have conducted? Oh gosh, we, so there's a, a thing called a cupping process um, that lets us know um, whether or not we want to introduce beans to the market. Um, and we'll go through various water to, to coffee ratios. And that's a, a consistent process. So every time that we're, we're sourcing new beans, we'll go through the experimentation. So it's countless, <laughs> in all honesty, um, because some coffee needs uh, a higher coffee to water ratio and vice versa. Um, so it, it certainly is an, an endless evergreen process. Um, so would wow, you so, ever so consider good. making a coffee candle? <laughs> A coffee can. Hmm. I never thought about that. I mean, I, I personally love the smell of coffee. Um, I, well, this is fantastic. It smells like super velvety. It smells kind of like it could be an ice cream, but a, just a decadent one. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It would be really great for an affogato. Yeah, so I, I am, I'm glad that we are now in the summer season because I'm looking forward to making an affogato. A oh, couple I of affogatos. I love that. Yes. Um, I vote for the candle. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to log that, uh, <laughs> and then I'll talk to V about that because hmm, I think we might be on to something. I'm, listen, okay, I would love water to learn ready. about the water is ready. Wait, what's the temperature of it? Seven. Okay, so we can wait a couple of minutes. Um, I would love to know about how you source the beans because I know that that's such a journey in and of itself. And Absolutely. Take me back to when you first began, like, what was the first few things that you were looking into, trips that you took, whatever it was. Also, yes, body scrubs with used grounds is a great. Yeah, it, coffee really works for exfoliating. A lot of people use it for, you know, you know, in their, their, their washing their face, right? So that's a, a great um, use of coffee. Coffee is a very dynamic plant. You know, I think that um, you know, once you go down that rabbit hole, it'll be difficult to get out of it, ultimately. <laughs> um, it's great. But, yeah, yeah. So going back to the beginning, when we started in the garage, um, Pernell, um, again, he was more of the, the coffee aficionado um, and decided to um, take it, you know, try his hand at roasting coffee. So we would source from local and, and national micro importers buying green coffee, which is pretty much the, the raw coffee bean and getting more of an understanding of what that roasting process will look like uh, once we um, were able to, to scale up operations. Um, so we've sourced coffee from um, Ethiopia, which is the birthplace of coffee. Um, we'll always have representation or, or coffee that represents that region, um, you know, just to pay homage to the originator, if you will. Um, we've also sourced coffee directly from farmers in uh, La Guadalupe, Honduras, um, Monte Verde, El, El Salvador, um, a few other single origins. And then we have our proprietary uh, blends um, that come from a combination of places like Colombia. And we're also looking at Peru as another uh, source of coffee. Um, you know, we're very intentional about seeking out fair trade coffees first and foremost. Uh, it's very important that um, we take care of every part or we are um, thinking about every part of, of the supply chain. So our beans are fair trade uh, where possible and, and then organic, of course, um, you know, as the national conversation has shifted um, to, to be more intentional of what we're putting in our bodies, we want to make sure that um, our coffees and our teas embody that. Love that. Okay. So we have our water. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so you got your coffee, right, you, got you got it ground to perfection, you got your water at the right temperature. And so now we're just going to pour till it's about a cup ultimately. Again, eight ounces if you were using that two tablespoon um, measurement initially. And you want to pour in a circular motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, pour in a circular motion. Pour Wait, in this is the circular first time motion. I've ever done this, just saying. Oh, uh, well, this is history in the making right now. Yeah. History in the making. <laughs> So you're gonna pour the circular motion just to ensure that all of those coffee grounds are um, are wet essentially. Yeah, and so you'll I start to see good. the extraction process happening immediately upon pouring uh, the water on top of the coffee grounds. And so you'll see that bubbling there. Yeah, you're doing your right once you see that. So that so that's the extraction. Yes. Yeah, so you are extracting the flavor 
from the coffee beans into actually to the actual cup of coffee that you'll enjoy here in about four minutes wow okay and this is um how many cups so this would make us one cup of coffee one okay. cup of coffee yeah great yep. um okay. and so i will go ahead and put the lid on top of it now this one yep yep don't don't depress the plunger just yet um, but go ahead and place the lid on the top so that it's all contained within the, uh, the decanter. Uh, perfect. Perfecto. And so then you'll wait about four minutes. That's about how long it'll take for the brewing process to be complete. However, midway through, you want to take maybe a wooden spoon and give that mixture a nice stir just to ensure that um, all of the coffee grounds are used for the, the brewing process. Okay, so in like one more minute, I will use a wooden spoon that I have and stir it. Are that's... we adding more water at any point? No, that's it. So if you pour oh, put, I put enough for three cups based on what he was saying. That's why oh. I- was... Oh, okay, so should I add more? Yeah, I would add the whole thing. I didn't realize, I thought that was part of the process was like- oh. You're ruining <laughs> our coffee. <laughs> Again, this, this is, coffee like brewing is all about experimentation, right? So that's totally fine that, um, oh yeah, go ahead and add a little more. Totally fine that you're gonna add more. You're, yeah. about, you're about to have some extra strong. I was yeah. gonna be like, this is <laughs> so good. <laughs> okay. I think that's good, no? Or do you want me to do like three cups? Oh, you said three cups, so like all yeah, the way? I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really yeah, hope. Okay, great. So then, so so now I will still use the wooden spoon, right? Yeah, yeah. Just again, halfway through the process, give okay. it a nice mixture. Ah, oh, perfect, perfect. And you want to use a wooden spoon because, um, as someone says here, um, the metallic reacts, right? And so, wow. um, using the wood spoon again, this is a, it's a very it's a highly scientific process that, that people may not realize. Again, I certainly didn't realize it early on in my coffee journey. Um, Can so, you yeah. tell the difference though now? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, it's starkly different from using, um, you know, K-cups or using the, the traditional um, drip method versus the more advanced methods like an AeroPress or French press or the pour over method. It's night, night and day. Well, so do you use, somebody said it took me a whole year to make the most perfect coffee. What, that's such great <laughs> dedication. Yeah. <laughs> that's I awesome. can appreciate that. So, um, do you, I, I was like, wait, what was the question? Because I wanted to ask it. Do you ever have coffee out or do you enjoy having coffee at like local shops or are you like oh, I'll, I'll still frequent my, my favorite coffee shops because they'll have um, roasts and um, single origins that we may not necessarily have in our product assortment. So, um, and it gives me an opportunity to get out the house. <laughs> so I, I certainly that. still What's your hope. order? Oh gosh, that's a great, I'll just have a, a nice cup of black coffee. But if I'm, you know, I want to cheat on that a little bit, um, you know, I add some almond milk or something along those lines. I'm, I'm pretty plain when it comes, comes to that because I want to make sure that um, you know, that the coffee isn't diluted by the, the extra additives. I really, now that I know what I'm tasting for, it's like a, a, a good glass of wine, all right? So you, you, there are flavored notes that are in a glass of wine. Coffee is very much so similar to that. Um, so that now, again, now that I know what I'm tasting for, um, I try not to um, uh, dilute that process. And what do you do when you want an iced cup of coffee? Yeah. Because I made, so I'm making this obviously hot now, but mm -hmm. I never, I very, very rarely drink hot coffee because I love, I like cold drinks. I like cold <laughs> coffee. So how do you, would you ever, I don't know, do you refrigerate this? Can you make cold brew? You both actually. Um, so you certainly can make, um, you can refrigerate it, right? Save it for later and then. Um, it'll still be great because you started with great beans from the from the start or you can go through the cold brew process Which takes a little bit longer than a French press, but it's still very similar um, In the steps that you would take you still would need coarse ground coffee um, You would need a, a, a similar piece of equipment 
as um, the French press is, you know, they're cold brew, they're, they're, they're cousins, <laughs> essentially. Um, and that brewing process takes hours, if you will, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, for it to extract, considering that it's not hot water that's being used. So either one, flip a coin, whichever is your preference, refrigerate your, your, your hot brewed cup of coffee for later, or go through the cold brew process. And I think that you'll be equally as satisfied. Amazing. You made cold brew through the French press, haven't you? Yeah. And I was just going to say, if you don't have a cold brew, no one's going to slap your wrist for using the French press. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I think it's been four minutes. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and let's try it. This is the best part. Now you get to depress the plunger and separate the coffee grounds from your actual cup of coffee. This oh, is so goodness. satisfying to me. I love watching this. It's a lot easier here. Because you're... Oh. oh, thanks. Okay, ready? Yeah. Ceremonies. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. Perfect. Woo! And so what you see there, that film at the top, that lets you know you did it right. Hey. Yeah. So you'll see at the bottom of your cup, once you're done consuming, that there'll be some residue left over totally fine when you're using your French press. So again, the film at the top of your mixture and then the residue at the bottom of your cup once you're done lets you know that you're on the right path. That's so great. This is so exciting. So is this ready to be poured and drank? It's ready. Wait, where's your coffee? Oh. <laughs> I, the entire time I've been instructing you, I forgot to brew it myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, now I feel like we've deprived you of a, of a good cup of coffee. Oh, you, you know what? That will be my, my, my second one for the day. Um, I'm, an, I'm an early riser, so I've already had my cup of coffee. Now I'm, I'm in full instructor mode. I want to make sure well, that you are. appreciate it. Thank you no, so much. No problem. no problem. Also, yes, some people, um, I noticed, because you guys are so popular, uh, that it's been sold out at Target. Oh, well, that, that, that's a good problem to have. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll be restocking and, re and replenishing with all of our retail partners. Um, you if you, are, you sell online? We also sell online um, at our website, blackandbold.com. Um, it's also available via Amazon, um, Target. And then if you're in the Chicagoland area, um, it's also available in Whole Foods. That's awesome. Although we just walked past our Whole Foods this morning and there was a line around the block. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So I feel, I feel very lucky that we got this in the mail. You can yes, yes. It. And that, that came directly from our facility. So that's going to be, the, those are the freshest beans um, that you're going to get. So I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Got them before Target. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to try this. So this mug, um, are you familiar with Brother Veli's? I am not. Educate me, please. Oh, my goodness. So Brother Veli's is a shoe company, um, super fantastic. The designer, Aurora James, um, she is absolutely incredible. She's been doing this thing called Something Special where you can subscribe. Um, also, Black female-founded business. And Perfect. she has actually started – you two should connect. She actually started um, the 15% pledge. So she's oh, no. happy, if you've heard, yeah. of, yeah, so heard of corporations try to use or commit to 15% of their shelves being by black owned businesses. So she's really great. And this mug is a part of her something special. So I'm really excited to try it. Do you want to try it first? No, that's all you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Extra strong. No, literally, just so I smooth. swear to God, if you say this is the best cup of coffee you've had. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> I can't pick favorites. No, this is fantastic. It's so, um, I didn't want to say it because it, it has a taste, but you know when it, when it's not too much of one thing or not too much of yeah. another thing? Okay. It's just. That Goldilocks. Oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and See, I, I, love I, I literally. <laughs> didn't even remember that and yeah. you're right yeah and that's really good that's awesome i, I love the french press because it, it 
the the flavor again the, it's it, you, you watch the extraction process and then also the texture it's, it's very silky um exactly if you will. and so um, i'm glad that you guys are validating that <laughs> and it's not just me telling people <laughs> right but could you imagine if i was on live and i was like actually this is pretty subpar and yeah. i'm a big fan so. I, I, I would just hit the end button really, really quick. <laughs> <laughs> You would see it all over my face. I can't ever hide my face. If I don't like something, I can't hide it. Oh, I'm, I'm the same exact way. Uh, it's yeah. a gift and a curse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, people know where they stand. They look at my face and they go, he really likes that or uh, he's not a fan. Yeah. What did you say to me yesterday? You were like, I know exactly what your faces are saying in any room that we're in. So like, <laughs> so, so do I like the coffee? Yeah, you actually do. See? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. This is I amazing. So how can, how, I mean, you are in Whole Foods, Target, and direct-to-consumer online. Is yep. there any other way that we can support you? Um, you know, we are uh, looking to expand the independent cafes, restaurants, and coffee shops that we work with. Um, and so we'll be announcing more of those, you know, later on in the year. Much of that has kind of been on a standstill, just given the current state of affairs. Yeah. Like people are, are frequenting coffee shops as they were before. But, um, you know, we may show up in, in your local cafe um, and, and it'll be on brew. So, you know, there are a, a variety of myriad of ways ultimately that people can support. And we're just appreciative of any way that people decide to do so. Can we also ask our independent coffee shops when we can, if they can uh, carry your brand? A absolutely, I would encourage you to. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. There's one more thing that I, that I wanted to yeah. say. Um, you know, and by supporting us, um, you actually are reinvesting in the communities. Um, so you know, the the hugest differentiator about what we do is that five percent of our profits are contributed back to initiatives that support domestic at-risk youth. Um, so Pernell and I, we grew up in Gary, Indiana, um, and had overcome you know, a, a lot of obstacles that exist within, within that region. And really, we were very deliberate about including that social impact at the core of what we do. So we partner with nonprofit organizations and national initiatives to enhance workforce development or help to eradicate food insecurities and youth homelessness and instill skills uh, around coding and urban farming and or just trying to ultimately you know, sustain general after school programming. So, you know, enjoying a cup of coffee with us ultimately allows you to participate in investing at at risk youth as well. Thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you for being my first teacher in, uh, <laughs> in French press. This is very exciting. Thank I you. I appreciate Ron. you so much. This is awesome. Yeah. We appreciate you for sharing your platform with us. I'm so glad that you enjoyed your, your first uh, French press of coffee, cup of coffee, and just let us know how we can um, support you in the future. Uh, we're just Thank eternally you. grateful. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank Look, you. Wait, wait, wait. Taste test, taste test. I'm t this is amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. Talk to you soon, Rod. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. That was Rod from Black and Bolt. You can order their coffee or their tea online. Um, that was so much fun. That was, it wasn't the first French press I've had because we do it a lot. It was the first French press I've made, which is just as exciting. And people keep asking about this sweatshirt. Um, Adam and I designed it years ago. So it's a keepsake. Um, thank you all so much. Make sure you follow Black and Bold and support them. And I'll see you in a few weeks. In the meantime, you can subscribe to our newsletter, which is just norsegory.com backslash newsletter um, and watch episodes of The Process and AYS on either the podcast or any of the video platforms. Talk to you all soon. And as always, at your service.